Welcome to the wonderful full funnel world of Pinterest. Some of you may already have noticed it. Our company mission is like a description of a full funnel in a nutshell. You have to bring everybody the inspiration to create a life they love. And these two statements actually mark the endpoints of a classic full funnel. It's awareness and action. But on Pinterest, the full funnel is also a bit different because it's much about positivity. It's much about like enabling the individual users to discover and do things they value and love rather than then having been stressed and forced by others' expectations. But more, uh, more about that in a minute. Let's have a look at our today's agenda, which is very easy, lean, simple to follow. First, what is a full funnel concept? Probably we all have heard about that term, but we do we share the same understanding about that thing. Second, why full funnel? Why on Pinterest? Is it just like a fluffy marketing term or is there really some bottom line value? And third, how to activate full funnel? Which means essentially, what can you do tomorrow or to a day after tomorrow when returning to your desk and would like to improve your Pinterest activities? Let's start with the what. We at Pinterest deeply care about the full funnel because it's essentially what helps our partners getting the most out of our platform. And it's also what our data tells us. But going one step back, full funnel. This is probably nobody in that room has never heard about the term full funnel in his or her professional career. It's such an omnipresent concept and it comes in unlimited flavors. For example, the number of funnel stages you want to include. Three, four, five, six. Are you integrating customer acquisition with customer retention, ending up in a bow tie model? I've never heard about that before, before preparing for the presentation. This looks good. When it comes to the naming conventions, are you team awareness, interest, desire, action? Or are you team see, think, do, care? And not to mention sheer unlimited color variations a full funnel model can have. But I think in the end, everybody gets it. Full funnel means actually connecting to the consumers and customers and users throughout the different stages of the decision-making process. Seen from a bigger picture, the full funnel concept needs to be orchestrated across teams and individuals based on a shared mindset, on a holistic mindset. This means it can span from collaboration between upper and lower funnel marketing teams to incentive structures which are based on shared make, uh, KPIs and goals, which make it attractive for the indi individual and the team to think behind their core role. But this is already out of scope for a masterclass for today, just because we're more, more focusing on things that are more likely in our controls, such as campaign structures, tactics, strategies. However, I think it's important to keep in mind that when you're dealing with a full funnel concept, that requires a mindset that fosters collaboration and a shared set of base a shared a set of um, common marketing KPIs and goals. And if you're interested more to hearing about the latter, I would deeply recommend you watching our latest webinar on brand performance measurement. Simply ask your printer's point of contact and you will get access to that material. But either way, let's move on. Full funnel. When it comes to full funnel, there is such a thing like a best practice, which means in its basic mode, you can run your marketing activities across the funnel stages in a way they are running in a siloed fashion, so they're not tied to each other. They're running independently. But also you can do it differently, which means like each funnel stage positively impacts the following ones. In order to achieve that pro level, from my experience, I would say two things are the biggest uh, drivers. It's first, create a strategy. It means having the right format and the right concept in place, which not only fulfills the needs of the current stage, but also makes people and users act as intended on the stage following after. Think of, as a negative example, think of like a consideration ad. It doesn't contain a CTA, so users landing on your web page don't know what to actually to do. The second biggest lever is audience strategy, which essentially means you want to make sure that your sequential storytelling lands with the right people at the right time. Think of targeting Pinterest users who have engaged organically with your content on Pinterest, but didn't web, uh, visited your uh, website yet and purchased a product. And if you're interested to hear more about creative strategy versus audience strategy, I would deeply recommend you drop by our OMR booth because our creative strategy team has developed a very own point of view about the increasing importance of a creative strategy in times of increased audience signal loss. So, where is creative strategy and audience strategy tell us how to play the full funnel game? There's also an interesting perspective when it comes to where to play. 
quoting here a Digital's Pixel Park paper from 2021 where it says, the essence of social commerce is that social media environments create experiences that span across the, uh, the whole customer journey at best in a seamless and consistent way. So that sounds a bit like the perfect playground for a full funnel strategy. Yes, it does. So to summarize, full funnel, we all know that term, we all heard about it, why talk about it? First, there's still a lot of businesses and partners and creators who focus only on one single funnel stage. To my experience, that number is going down. Think of all the meter travel platforms, for example, who have built and established a brand equity on top of their pure conversion focus as otherwise they would have seen as replaceable by users, by partners, by the ecosystem. Second, there's still a lot of partners, businesses, creators who, while active across the funnel stages, do so in a more siloed fashion. So it's not quite the best practice we've been talking about. And third, social media platforms per design are perfectly built to live up to the potential of a full funnel strategy. And what that potential is, and why Pinterest specifically does good in a full funnel game, is what I'm going to talk about now for some minutes. I touched on that indirectly before. One way of seeing a full funnel is like the integration of upper and lower funnel marketing activities, which have been running in a more siloed fashion before. Coming from a more branding perspective, McKinsey sees that like adding branding on top of performance leads to better results due to a couple of factors like customers that are loyal to your brand, deliver a higher lifetime revenue at lower acquisition cost, thus higher margins. Another example, I'm old enough to remember or remember stories about search engine marketeers who are looking the whole day at multiple screens, watching the search engine auction to spot opportunities to throw their campaigns up. Now, most platforms offer machine learning based optimization features. So that kind of competitive differentiator has gone a bit. And this branding based perspective is also shared by the performance side of the game. Take for example, Home24, a home decor online partner, which sees great success on Pinterest. Though they're deeply rooted in the performance marketing game, they see it as crucial to add channels like Pinterest to the marketing mix because it, they can so reach new and incremental audiences and it helps them to differentiate from a branding perspective. In that perspective, that a integrated full funnel approach delivers better results is also backed by our internal data. Compared, to, uh, what we see is like that users who have been exposed to ads from multiple funnel stages, they convert at a higher rate. For example, compared to the baseline conversion rate on Pinterest, users who have been exposed to ads from two campaign objectives convert at a rate up to two times higher. And users who have been exposed to ads from three campaign objectives convert at a rate up to three times higher. So probably it's worth to mention here that campaign objectives are simply the representation of funnel stages within Pinterest campaign setups. So much for the conversion rate. But do Pinterest people come to get inspired to start a decision-making process? which means it's much about delivering incrementality, incremental sales. But also we see here that full funnel approach has positive impact. Based on a meta study on conversion lift studies we run, we saw that advertisers and partners who are running activities on more than one campaign objective saw a 57% increase or improvement of their sales after this increase compared to advertisers who have been active on only one campaign objective. So we had conversion rates, higher conversion rates. We had an uplift and improvement of the incremental sales. What about lifetime rally, revenue? Same here. We've seen that compared to single objective advertising campaigns, advertisers who were active on multiple campaign objectives saw higher repeated rep uh, return and purchase rates from returning customers, which is equals higher lifetime revenue. And that notion of like a full funnel approach helps you getting better results. It's not only limited to a lower stages of the funnel, but also applies for the upper and mid funnel stages. Similar to the approach we mentioned before, the meta analysis and the conversion lift studies. We also did a meta analysis on brand lift studies. Here you can see the results here, which with single objective campaigns highlighted in white, and multi objective campaigns highlighted in red. And what you can see here, across all available brand lift, ma lift metrics from message association to brand awareness, we've seen that multi-objective campaigns, in most cases, tended to drive the higher brand metrics uplift. 
But now going back to what I've been saying before, social media platforms are the perfect playground for a full funnel strategy. Of course, it's hard to ask a given user like, how much did you like a full funnel approach you got in contact with when being active on platform ABC? In order like, to quantify the full funnel capability of a given platform. But what you can do, you can ask them to what extent they show an affinity for a given funnel stage and to what extent they are active on a given platform. And this is what we did here. The German internet population, 18 plus, was asked, do you use the internet to, to get inspiration and find, uh, find new ideas? And 67% of all Pinterest users agreed to that statement, while only 42 for other social media platforms and 43 for search, engine, uh, search engines. This probably doesn't come much as a surprise because like, Pinterest is very well known for its Pinterest inspiration DNA. Got it. But now going down the funnel, looking at the lower funnel stages. The German intent population was asked, did you recently buy a given product? And for the product category, uh, did, did, did you buy it online? And for the product category, we chose clothes just because e-commerce, uh, fashion is one of the largest e-commerce sectors in Germany. And it turned out that 32% of all pinners agreed to that statement. Well, only 21 for so other social media users and 22 for search engine users. And that all boils down to a Pinterest product uh, or a platform vision. As our CEO Bill Reddy recently stated in one of our earlier um, uh, earnings calls, it's our vision to make every pin shoppable. And we've already come a long way here. What you can see on the right are three different Pinterest user experiences, ranging from editorial content, powering inspiration, visual AI-backed product identification, and product detail pages. And while all these three different experiences span across the full funnel, they have all one thing in common. It's feed-based shopping product metadata, which is used to build and inform these experiences. Lastly, Pinterest users focus a lot on values. 62% say that they prefer brands that are eco-friendly, while it's only true for 52 of other social media platforms and 56 for the search engine users. This is something we're super proud of. At the same time, it reminds us that we need to continue building positive user experiences into our platforms, which we have been doing for years already, setting industry standards. For example, compassionate search. Whenever a user is typing in a query on Pinterest that indicates mental stress, we show them helpful activities that aim for reducing that stress, and which we help, which we had built into a collaboration with health experts. For example, if a user is typing in sad quotes, we show up exercises which help them to explore their inner strengths and also show up with hotlines which they can turn to if they need more help. In addition, we also recently teamed up with the University of Berkeley to get a better understanding of the role of media, or of the role of media consumption on well-being. And it turned out in that study that regular Pinterest usage helped the study participants to better manage stressful situations, in that case, university exams. So this focus on positivity is really something we are proud of and that differentiates us from other platforms, but it also comes with benefits for our business partners. Because positivity is no longer only a consumer argument anymore. Our research found out that positive online environments create a halo effect that positively impacts brands that are showing up on those platforms and environments. From awareness to sentiment, from trust to purchase. And taking all these things together, the inspiration Pinterest gives, the opportunity it gives its users to shop their dreams, and also like all built on top of the positivity that's built into the experiences and products, this makes our own very full funnel approach very resonating with people along across the way. We have like more than 16 million people in Germany actively turning to the platform each and every month. So far for the waterfall funnel is, why it's important, and now my colleagues Martina and Ben We'll walk you through the probably longer awaited part, more interesting part of that masterclass, how to best set up a full funnel strategy on Pinterest. Handing over to Marty. Thank you. Fantastic, that was an amazing overview. So now that we understand the basic concept of full funnel, we can move into the how. So before we dive into the detail again, um, I just want to take a moment to talk about our Pinterest audience. Our audience is different than that of other platforms. Our users are here to search for inspiration. 
They're here to search for ideas and to find their next big idea, whether it's for a small moment, maybe, like the next date night that they have with their friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, or uh, whether it's their big moments in life, like buying a new house and like planning for family. Pinterest is the number one place for discovery and the number one place for inspiration. So people come with an open mind to find the ideas that they're looking for and the ideas that will make their lives better. We are there to build a life that they love and to help the audiences and our pinners, as we like to call them, to find that spark of inspiration all the way through to action. We are also the number one place where audiences come to find information and to discover new brands. So your brand has a very big opportunity to influence the audience and to influence that buying decision while it's still at the very early stages and while users have that open mind. When it comes to their mindset, it's all about the future. It's not so much about the great party that I went to last night or look at that amazing dress that I bought already and I'm wearing today. That's fantastic. It's about the future. It's about what am I going to do next week? What am I going to do next month, next year, or maybe years in advance? There are cases where people now are saving their dream wedding dress ideas on boards on Pinterest, even though a wedding may be years ahead, but already people are visualizing, they're getting that inspiration, and they're feeling the need to, to find those best ideas on Pinterest. So it's all about that future planning. What that means is that our audience has a different behavior when they come to the platform. They're here to discover those ideas broadly. Sometimes they come, but they're not even sure what they're looking for yet. But they're trying to find that next piece of furniture, that next amazing uh, clothing, or even a nice recipe, or some financial planning advice. For all of these ideas, they have the open mind. And what you should do as an advertiser when you activate is to think about targeting broadly across interests. You might think that there are certain interests that are core to your brand. So yes, uh, if you are a home decor brand, you might just want to target people who are looking for home and DIY inspiration. But this is actually an opportunity to think about adjacent interests as well. Because when, when a pinner is searching for home decor specifically, they might also have other key life moments that are linked to that new home purchase. So things like engagements and weddings, favorite theme. Things like having a new baby uh, are all key triggers that can help you understand that this user is about to most likely move into a new home. So activate across your core interests and also activate across the adjacent interests that relate to your brand. Plan for the future. Our users are here to plan for that future, which means that some of these plans, they take time, but they don't always require people to come to the platform daily and to scroll mindlessly through lots of hours of content. They come here, usually on a weekly basis, and they are very mindful. They scroll slower, and they look at every piece of content, whether it's organic or whether it's your ad, to get that inspiration. So again, it's a fantastic opportunity to be present at that moment and to allow um, your brand to be the next idea that users discover. Finally, as they go further down the funnel towards the refining of their decision-making process, you could use all of these signals that they leave on platform. So you could use people who have saved your pins uh, earlier on from previous campaigns or your organic content. You could use people who've clicked or engaged in any way as signals to start to build your story and continue to speak to them at different moments in time throughout your campaigns. And finally, we have a long section about that at the end. Don't worry, shopping. They are here to shop ideas into reality. So be mindful to have your um, catalog feed uploaded to the platform and to use our shopping solutions, which Ben will take us through a little bit later on. When it comes to building awareness, because of that mindful state of mind that our audiences are in, they do pay attention to the ads that they're seeing and they remember. So you could build that memory and you could build that ad recall using Pinterest 
And in fact, 80% of campaigns drive ad recall. In addition, going further down the funnel, we also see that Pinterest ads can build action intent. And that is, uh, in fact, a 1.2 times higher action intent that we've seen thanks to campaigns that were on Pinterest. So it's a great opportunity whether you want to build that initial space for your brand, maybe you're a new brand and you want to build that awareness, or if you want to get your audience to act. For both of these, Pinterest is a great place to be. So now we're going to just take a few more moments to talk about that very top of the funnel activity, so building awareness. And we're going to start with the three main goals or ways in which you can build awareness. So first, it's about reaching new audiences, an incremental set of users, maybe those that you haven't touched throughout your marketing journey, and also reaching them with a different message. So reaching them with a message related to their future planning. Secondly, you could leverage rich ad experiences in our awareness suite. So you could start, of course, with standard videos, but you could also do much more immersive formats and idea ads, and even our uh, Premier Spotlight, which we'll talk about later on, which is a very exclusive way for you to have high impact takeovers of our platform. More on this in a second. Finally, even at the beginning of the awareness stage, you could reconnect with users at different, with different angles of your messaging. So when I was mentioning before about the adjacent interests and maybe finding a different angle where your brand can be useful and helpful to our audience, this is also where you could use engagement retargeting to start to tell your brand story from, from multiple angles. If you think about the goals that you can achieve and what you could be aiming for, especially with the awareness activity, you could be more on the left side of this slide where it's about efficient reach. So getting to a broad audience at the most cost efficient way, which means prioritizing unique reach over frequency and getting to as many eyeballs uh, as you can with your campaigns. The more you move towards the right, we start looking at engaged audiences, building your product presence on the platform, and finally reaching those high intent users who are there to buy. By balancing the creatives and the messaging that you use, you could be using just one of these strategies or you could apply multiple of these strategies into your campaigns and test and learn and see which one is the best approach for you on Pinterest. I'm going to go into just a little bit of detail on the first one, which is to maximize efficient reach. This is where you can use our awareness objective and optimize towards CPM or cost per thousand impressions. You could use our standard formats, both video and static ads. It's good to have a mix. Uh, it's good to try different angles of that format, as I already have mentioned. And the standard uh, formats tend to be co more cost efficient than some of our premium offerings, of course. When it comes to targeting, broad is best run of site, broad demographic, interests and keywords. So you could apply that strategy and you might be surprised uh, which audience cohorts engage the most with your ads. So keep an open mind and target broadly. I'll talk about creative in a second because it is one of the most crucial elements of actually cutting through and building that attention and capturing users imagination even, uh, while they're searching for that next idea. So I'll leave that for another um, slide. But the KPIs that you can optimize to and you can look at for performance would be reach, frequency, and CPMs. You could use, of course, Pinterest Ads Manager reporting, which is available to anyone running a paid campaign. Or if you want to focus on some additional tracking, you could use a third-party viewability provider to also see how much attention is paid to your ads. Two very important, or in fact, it's one lever, but two very different ways in which you could use that one lever to maximize your campaign goals is to use frequency management. This can be either a frequency cap where we the maximum time of exposures that we want our audience to have. So this can be really useful if you want to extend the reach of your campaign and let's say you know that you don't want people to see your ad more than two times, so you would set that as your campaign cap. Again, keeping in mind the weekly frequency. 
Secondly, if you want to build more of your story and if you want to get your exposures more frequently to our audience, you could also set a target, which becomes the goal towards which our algorithm will optimize. So you want to deliver your message three, four times, whatever that goal is. You could use both uh, and be mindful that with the target setting, especially, it's not a guarantee that the frequency target will be hit, but it will be as close to hit as possible. Creative. So this is where we move into the visual element. And Pinterest is such a visual platform that it's crucial to have creatives done right. You will see this repeated throughout today. I'm giving you a heads up already. Uh, but we're going to start with the basics. We need to have an inspiring and visual image. So visually appealing, lifestyle image with a human touch. Have your logo present throughout. If it's a video, have it throughout the entire length. If it's a static image, just have tasteful branding on the pin. Have your product in focus and have your key message visible through a stylish text overlay or in the pin title and description. And make sure that people understand, of course, what the message is and what your brand stands for. So think about brand benefits, think about different products that you want to promote, and again, test different variants as you set up your campaigns. Our best practice is to have between two to four ads in a single ad group, but of course for awareness you could try all different options and you could have more ads in a single campaign to try to see in which area does your ad fit best or your brand fit best. You might be wondering what are all the ad formats, so now we're going to focus a bit more on the ones that you've heard about already standard pins and standard videos. They are our um, standard vertical formats, two by three and uh, high quality imagery use. They appear on the home feed, they appear on the search feed, so you could be in both places. Then if you want to be more impactful, this is our mobile only max width video format. As the name suggests, that format takes over the entire width of the mobile screen. So you could see it's big, it's great for cutting through the clutter, and it's a format that you could use for those most, more impactful campaigns. If you want to go one step further into campaigns that can be used for generating deeper engagement with the brand, telling a longer brand story, or giving people useful tips like how to style themselves for an event like today, you could use our idea ads format. This gives you a very long um, format opportunity to have a mixture of static and video content into one and to take people maybe through a really interesting brand story or useful how-to guides. So it's um, a format that appears, again, fully in full screen on mobile devices and it's, quite, it's very engaging and allows you to build that deeper connection. And finally, the format that the few of you that said uh, you went to our keynote earlier, you've already heard about that. Uh, it is our Pinterest Premier Spotlight format. It is an exclusive takeover format that you can use for a three-day takeover of our search feed. So everyone who goes to search on Pinterest will see your ad at the top exclusively. You have the opportunity to book that in advance. We're still in early testing phases, but if you come by our booth later on, you have the ability to, on the spot, book your date when you want to launch that spotlight. So save that for a very big event or for a big opportunity that's coming up for your brand. The best way to think about creatives and how, how do I know what my creatives should be focused on and how do I find these potentially adjacent interests and topics that people are looking for? look no further than the Pinterest Trends tool. It's available to everyone and there's data, if you're from the German market, you could also see data in the US, UK and across the world. You just need to go to your analytics tab uh, on your Pinterest profile and go to Pinterest Trends or easily go to trends.pinterest.com as your source where you can find all this information. It gives you the best trending topics with seasonality, index search volumes, as well as thematic um, breakdowns where you could look at specific interests, uh, if you want home decor or fashion or finance, 
It can also give you indication of specific keywords that you want to search and see, okay, I am into gardening, so I wonder what is the biggest topic right now. It is actually Gartengestaltung Ideen, which is not only the biggest topic in, at the moment, the highest trending theme for gardening, but it's also the biggest trending topic in Germany today. So, who knew? It's the sunshine outside. People now are getting very excited to set up their gardens. Me amongst those people uh, with limited success, as I mentioned. Uh, so, yeah, you could find all that information and more on the Trends tool. And you could use it for your organic campaigns as well as your paid activity. And finally, when it comes to moments and the big themes that people are looking for, we know that pinners come to our platform early. They start searching for big occasions early on. You could see here some of the bigger um, seasonal moments in Germany, but if you are interested to find out what that looks like in different countries, or if you want to know more, please speak to your Pinterest reps or come and see us at our booth soon. So, what should the strategy be like? <laughs> well, think about having an always-on strategy as the first layer. This ensures that your brand stays top of mind and you have a good share of voice on the platform within your category and also within your audience segment. Then, think about aligning and upweighting your budget based on those key moments where you want to be present and where you want to break through that clutter. This is where you think about seasonal upweights, where you think about adding more engaging formats like more ideas or maybe max with videos and starting to build that more um, upweight presence throughout. And finally, what we call our tentpole moments. Um, this is the big boost opportunities where you have a one day sale or you have a fantastic opportunity for, again, a premier spotlight takeover or some of, your, some of the other exclusive products. Don't miss those opportunities to just go big for a short time and awareness is the best objective with which you could do that. So, a lot of information here, but how do we measure the success of our campaigns? How do we know that our awareness activity reached the audiences and maybe changed their minds? There's two main ways and two main sources that we're gonna talk about today. The first one is Pinterest Ads Manager. This is your own platform reporting that you can see. Um, and the KPIs that you can look at are reach, frequency, and CPM to ensure that the campaign is going as good as it can. Secondly, if you want to understand the incremental impact that Pinterest is bringing, and actually, did we shift perception? Did we increase ad recall and use it as a measurement study? You could use our brand lip solutions and work directly with our fantastic measurement team to understand the impact of every one of your campaigns. So brand new studies can help you with, uh, again, ad recall, brand favorability, and other sets of questions that you want to answer through a survey form. So use both of these options. And an advertiser who saw great success with awareness activity has been a name that uh, is, in fact, one of the sponsors of OMR today. It's Vodafone, who in Q4 last year, at the time, which is the peak season of retail, sales, Black Friday, at that time, they managed to use awareness as part of their campaigns to generate 4.9 points incremental ad recall lift. This means their creative stood out from the crowd and they drove people to remember the ads and to take action. Now we're going to move into consideration. And this is where we take one step further down the funnel and we start thinking about what are, what are these users who are now refining their decision making and they're looking for that next big idea for them? The main way in which you could use consideration objectives is to drive qualified traffic to your website. So there's two main optimizations, whether you want to optimize towards pin clicks, uh, which are people zooming in on your content in full screen, or if you want to take them out of the platform and optimize towards outbound clicks. And again, with consideration, you could reconnect with your audience and you could re-engage with users who may have seen the first um, awareness campaigns that you had. What should you do and what should your strategy be? Again, the detail slide here, uh, when it comes to formats, 
mix and match. You could use your standard pins, but you could also uh, dive into carousel ads, which are multi-page formats, where you could, for example, show different functionalities of your product or um, other details about your brand. Targeting again, go broadly with interests and keywords, use act-alike audiences to find similar users to maybe your website visitors or people who've engaged with your content before, and engagement audiences again for everyone who's left those valuable on-platform signals that they're interested in your brand. So take them one step further. And you can look at uh, cost per click and click-through rate as your campaign goes and start to also measure your site analytics to see uh, improvements in bounce rates and um, site session times. Ooh. When it comes to creative, again, you will see very similar best practices to what we mentioned already in awareness. But here, the key for consideration is that we want to get people excited to find out more. We want them to click, we want them to visit, find out more, explore, all of these words you could use in your call to action together with your product focus creative, together with that branding that we already mentioned before. So keep adding excitement into uh, your audience's lives and make sure that your creative really tells them what to do and where to go to find out more. Now, Taking a pause for a moment to discuss again the two uh, main features that you could use for consideration campaigns. Above me here, uh, you can see the outbound click optimization. As I mentioned, this is uh, one of the best ways to actually optimize to people who come to visit your website. So you would see that on a normal, uh, from a normal ad, once you click a single time, that's a pin click, and it just expands your creative into full screen and shows the full information for our users. And then pinners can click once more to come to your website. So now both optimization opportunities are available for your consideration campaigns, and you could test and learn to see which one drives better performance for your brand. And secondly, you can take your pinners as well as shoppers very directly into your app pages with mobile deep linking. So this is the way that uh, once a pinner clicks on a pin, they're taken directly to the app that they have installed on their phone. So it's frictionless user journey and it's a great way for you to take people directly where they need to be. And finally, in terms of measurement again. So we have our usual ads manager data that you could use as your on-platform reporting. It's about engagement rates there. It's outbound clicks, page visits, and click-through rate that can be your core metrics. And again, use Lyft studies if you want to learn about incrementality on Pinterest. We'll be very happy to do this uh, with your measurement teams and ours. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Ben, who's going to take us home with conversions. Thank you, Martina. Awesome overview. So we come all the way. Yeah, big applause, big applause. So we come all the way from discovery to decision and now finally do. So let's move to our next stage of the funnel, conversions. When we talk about conversions at Pinterest, we want to target pinners who are most likely to take an action, to make a purchase. In doing so, we offer you the possibility to optimize towards four different kinds of conversion events. The lead, the sign up, the add to cart, and the checkout. And in addition to that, you can also upload a product feed onto Pinterest. No worries, we will talk about this more in detail on the next slide, but these are the two main things that you can use within the conversion objective. Now, when we talk about conversions, I want you to clearly understand that conversions within Pinterest, when you go into the Ads Manager, offers two different campaign objectives that you can choose to run ads on Pinterest. One is a scaled approach, while the other a manual. Both of them follow the rule of, of course, getting the most conversion for you, but they are slightly different in technicality. I will make sure to walk you through these from left to right and give some overview about the technicalities. In general, both of these objectives fulfill the same business goal. So you're optimizing towards an IROAS, a return on invest, or an offline sales lift. But when it comes to the technicality, let's have a closer look. Now, catalog sales is our scaled approach. And when we talk about catalog sales, we talk about shopping. 
we talk about a product feed that needs to be ingested to Pinterest. A product feed is a feed file that contains all the information from your products, and this can be implemented to Pinterest in order to run ads on a scaled solution. So it's the most scaled way for you and your business to reach pinners advertising your products. As a format and as a best practice, we recommend using standard shopping ads. I will give you an overview about that in a minute. Shopping collections as well. When it comes to the targeting, I would like you to understand that for shopping, we take all the information from the feed file itself, be it the title, the description, the categorization, the price, etc., so on and so forth. So for the shopping or catalog sales objective, you won't have the possibility, as you might know from awareness campaigns or for consideration campaigns, to choose a specific interest or a keyword. Of course, you can add negative keywords for brand safety, but again, we're automatically taking all the information from the feed already. So this will be distributed automatically. In addition, you can, of course, use manually creative audiences. You can use dynamic retargeting. We will offer you automatically. And, and when it comes to the creative, again, remember that also the creatives should be provided within the feed. And now within the feed file, you can have a lot of creatives like clear product shots, which sometimes you can feel these are boring, but even those product shots count for pinners. And if you have an additional shot from the left, from the right, from above or below, or also a lifestyle image, make sure to include that as well. Our system will optimize towards the best results when a pinner engages with these pins and show the right image at the right time. Now let's move to the right side, our manual approach, our counterpart to the scaled one. You can run conversion campaigns on Pinterest using an enhanced spectrum of optimization events. This can be the lead and the sign up. And of course, you can also use the manual approach to optimize towards an add to cart or a checkout. As a best practice, we recommend you using the format aesthetic, carousel, or a collection ad. Now, when it comes to the targeting, since this is a manual approach, you have the possibility to manually choose interests, as you already know from awareness campaigns or consideration campaigns, and you can also insert and add keywords, the same as negative keywords for brand safety reasons. In addition, you can create audiences if you want to retarget specific pinners who have shown a specific desired intent. That is no problem. But when it comes to the creative, a manual approach also comes with a responsibility. And since creative is key, I would like to make sure to spend some time on the next slide when it comes to the anatomy of a conversion pin. So as a surprise, you can most likely see some similar of the points that Martina already covered, but it is very, very important when you want to optimize for success that you also create assets for each stage of the funnel. And leaving this masterclass, I want to make sure that you take awareness of these four main bullet points. So be specific about the product. You want to sell a product, so you should make sure that the product stays in the center and there's focus on it. Make sure that your branding is always included. Pinners want to know who is selling the product. As a third one, make sure to use a clear title. Tell the pinners what this product is about, so to guide them through. And last but not least, you want to make and achieve the conversion. So be very clear and use a clear call to action showing what is expected of the pinner to do. Shop now, visit a so shop, or sign up. Now let's move on to shopping. Everything that is related to shopping at Pinterest, as I said, starts with the shopping feed. And using a shopping feed on Pinterest offers a lot of possibilities and benefits for your brand. First of all, it is completely free, so you can start right away. And you can already use pre-existing feeds that you most likely use for other platforms and just upload it for Pinterest. We use the same industry standards to make it as easy as possible for you. Now, I would like to spend a minute on a very, very important opportunity that catalog, a catalog and the upload of a product feed offers to you. Now imagine a product feed in your business, or you're working, for example, with a business together that contains, let's say, 100, 1,000, 100,000, or even over a million products. That is quite usual, right? So imagine uploading this feed with all these kinds of thousands of products. Now what we do is we convert every single product into one unique product pin on Pinterest. And in addition, 
We also convert per additional image that you contain within the feed. Remember, an image from the side, from above, a lifestyle image, the clear product shot. In addition, we also create one unique product pin. Now again, one unique product pin for all of these hundreds, thousands of millions of pin. And this is a scale solution that every business should not miss out. And specifically, in challenging times where you look for a maximum output with minimum invest and input, this is a brilliant opportunity for your business to be present on Pinterest, first organically, but also to underline this, obviously, with shopping ads. Now, we often hear that uploading a product feed, there is a Pinterest tag needed. That is wrong. So you can already start with uploading a product feed. You can even start shopping campaigns, optimizing towards a cost per click. So if you want to optimize and if you want to advertise your products on a scale basis by driving traffic, you can already do it without the implementation of a Pinterest tag. Now, if you want to optimize towards an add-to-cart or a checkout, of course, we highly recommend and a Pinterest tag is needed. But these are the two options that you can already use. Now, a lot of you operate in different markets, in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, and you most likely have unique product feeds for those markets. Now, at Pinterest, we want to make it easy for you in order to upload these products and the product feeds as well. So you can upload multiple product feeds per business profile, or you can choose to even have a bigger organic presence per market to upload multiple product feeds per market itself. That is also totally possible. And we will make sure to automatically distribute all of these products organically using the currency that you provide within the feed, the language, or the country. For ads purposes, you can always choose where you want to advertise these products. Now, once you uploaded a product feed, the results will most likely follow quickly. So what we saw is for merchants who uploaded a product feed, we saw a natural increase of up to five times more impressions on Pinterest. How does this come? Remember, for every single line, we create one pin. This is a massive opportunity for you as a brand and as an advertiser to be present on Pinterest with all your products and be visible. Now, this sheer amount of volume naturally leads into an increase of product saves and also attributed checkouts. On average, we also saw an increase of up to 90% product saves and 30% increase in attributed checkouts. Again, upload your product feed and make usage of the benefits that we can offer. Now, all of these products now can appear automatically on organic surfaces. We call them shopping surfaces. I want to guide you through and show some of them that you should not miss out. Shop from search. So you should be present when pinners are actively looking for pins that we also categorize within a dedicated shop tab within the search. Shopping lists. A lot of pinners are searching their ideas, adding them to shopping lists. So make sure that your product and your brand will be present there and can be saved for future purchases. Shop from pins. When you become a merchant, we also allow you to participate in so-called categorization of pins. So if, for example, as you can see here, shares, wall art, planters, or coffee tables, your product can appear within these categorizations as well. And last but not least, you also have the opportunity to participate in Shopping Spotlight. It is a dedicated and curated space at Pinterest where we show specific shopping ideas to our pinners. Now, I hope you're ready to upload the feed. And I want to show you how you can do that by using our three uploading methods. Number one, and the simplest one, is you can just provide a direct download link to your feed file that it contains and insert it into our Pinterest catalogs UI. The rest we will do for you on an automatic basis. Or you can join thousands of advertisers using already our Shopify or WooCommerce integration. And we are already doing more to extend that to uh, Salesforce Commerce and Adobe Commerce to make it even more easy and accessible for advertisers. And last but not least, if you have large inventories and you want to ensure real-time updates, the Pinterest shopping API is the best way to use as well. Now, uploading a product feed, you might remember, we use every information from the feed in order to target and match those to interests and keywords across Pinterest. This also comes with a slight responsibility to provide as much information as you possibly can within the feed. I want to drive attention on visuality first. So in order to show and, uh, and ensure a visual product experience, make sure that you contain within your feed relevant product titles. You most likely have them based from your website product description, 
that is relevant and gives some information about the pin and the product. And last but not least, as you know, Pinterest is very visual. So make sure to use visually appealing images, product shots or lifestyle images. Now, how to increase relevancy and reach efficiency. So in addition to that, in order to make matching to interests and keywords easier, include the Google product taxonomy. And include it on the deepest level as you potentially can. So you know, a chair can fall into a living room. It can be the best for a working desk station, but also for the kitchen. So make sure your products that you're using contain a Google product taxonomy showing in which categorization it falls. So we can make it as easy as possible to short the right pinner at the right time. You can use product types for your own business logic to classify by seasonality, by your own specific themes. We also use this as an attribution signal. Or you can use additional attributes. I would highly recommend inputting as much information as possible, such like shipping information, the sizes, availability, conditions, etc., cetera, et cetera. Now becoming a merchant, you will automatically be considered to participate in so-called merchant features, or you can apply for them. So make sure to not miss out. Join the Verified Merchant Program and show our pinners that you apply with our merchant guidelines, and you can show them that you are loyalty and trustworthy brand. In addition, get the blue check mark to that. Now make usage of our product tagging offering. What is product tagging? As you can see here on the screen, there is a nice kitchen image visible. But within these images, you have multiple products that you potentially can sell. So uploading a product feed offers you the possibility to tag specific products within an image and make them instantly shoppable for our pinners. Help them make the user journey as smooth and easy as possible. Now at Pinterest, we're doing a lot to increase inspiration and also support diversity. So pinners can already search for beauty-related content using so-called skin tone ranges. And we are already trying to expand that to other features and other verticals as well. And Martina already touched based on it. Also mobile deep linking is something that we're currently experimenting with in shopping. So make sure that you can directly link from your ads to your in-app content and make it as easy as possible for the pinner to buy your product. Now in addition, we also want to make it as easy as possible and offer more solution for travel clients. So we are currently testing the upload and implementation of travel feeds with dynamically hotel displays. And in order to make it as easy as possible for travel brands to upload their feeds. Imagine a pinner who is planning their big next adventure and your brand with your feed can be visible in there. Now let's talk about the shopping ad solution, how you can diversify your creative approach. Use standard shopping ads, which show a clear product shot. This is specifically good for retargeting purposes. Or you can use collection ads. Now collection ads, as you can see here, you can upload a hero image and you can show up to 24 products below. This is specifically good if you want to guide the pinner through the journey and show them a theme-based picture and some related products to them. Help them make the right decision, explore your content. In addition, you can also include and upload video shopping ads to even drive more engagement. And if you have the possibility, you can check with your feed management provider to use call to actions automatically or work with designated partners of Pinterest to dynamically use text overlays to even make your creatives outstanding. Now let's put this into an example and see how we can use those formats. So you want to start with broad and prospecting, for example, in catalog sales. Now use collection ads. As you remember I said, you can use them to guide the printers through and show them a lot of related products to a theme-based picture. You can start on CPC if you want. You can start on CPA. But this is specifically good for a broad audience and start. Now the more you narrow down your approach, the better a classic product shot becomes. So use standard ads for dynamic retargeting or for narrow audiences to show specifically a pinner who most likely visited your website or have already added something into the basket to remember them to make the purchase. Now let's come to tracking and implementation solutions. 
By implementing the Pinterest tag, we want to make sure for you to get the best overview about the signals that you're getting and also that you have a clean implementation because tracking obviously is key to make the right decisions. Now, on the left example, you can see our Pinterest tag overview showing you what kind of signals we're getting from your website. This could be an add to cart signal, a checkout signal, so on and so forth. But also on the right side, we want to make sure that we're getting the right data from and within these signals. A very simple example. When we are receiving a signal like an add to cart, we also want to make sure to know how many products are in the basket, what is the price, and what is the product idea to specifically retarget for your purposes. And from tracking to conversion, we also want to make sure to increase and use the best conversion visibility that we potentially can have. In addition to Pinterest tag, we also offer solutions to implement automatic enhanced match, enhanced match, conversion upload, and also the conversion API to increase the volume of conversions that you can see and make the right decisions for your campaigns. And if you want to run incrementality studies to prove the incrementality of Pinterest for future budget decisions, talk to our agents and we're happy to help you here. Now conversion visibility. It is a very important topic I just want to spend one slide off. Now with conversion visibility and the conversion API, you will make sure that you're ready for the future. Now with the deprecation, of third-party cookies on the horizon, we know that advertisers and brands are facing through unchallenging times and need to make sure to prepare themselves. Now the conversion API can help to increase signals and make the right decisions and seeing increased number of conversion volume for your Pinterest campaigns. We also offer you a good overview that you can see here on the right with deduplication. And the good thing about that as well is, is that if you already integrated the conversion API within other platforms, we use the same integration process, so it's easy to implement. So make sure you're ready for the upcoming months and years with the Techless future. Now, this is a lot of theory. Let's show you a success case showing you real numbers. Now, KDV wanted to future-proof their business. And for them, it was very clear because they were operating and are operating in a very privacy-sensitive market in Germany that they need to implement the conversion API to make the right decisions. So for their always on strategies, they talk to our teams, we help them guide through that, and we implemented the conversion API. And I think the results, as you can see here on the slide, speaks for themselves. After implementing the conversion API, they saw a lift in attributed checkouts for Pinterest of 133%, and on average, an improvement in checkout CPA of 57%. Again, 133 and 57%. These are amazing results that the conversion API for Pinterest can drive towards your business in order to make the right decision and evaluate the channel that you're using in the right way. Ooh, Ben, that was a lot of information. Take a moment. That was amazing. How's everyone? Applause. Okay, well, now you have all sat through the theory before you take a driving exam. So now what we're going to do is to actually get in the car. So it's the most interesting part. Kick us off, Ben. And here I am again. Thanks for the applause. <laughs> so let's move on to a very interesting chapter, Activate Full Funnel. Because we covered a lot of theory, I want to make sure that you leave this masterclass with some specific campaign examples, how you can set them up. So Martina covered awareness, consideration. I just talked about conversion and shopping. Now let's put this all together. When we talk about full funnel, we want to target pinners across the entire funnel stages. And as you might remember Torsten mentioning in the beginning, we want to make sure that we're not doing everything. We want to make sure that every single stage of the funnel impacts the others in the best way to not only get good, but the best results. And we can achieve that by using a very intelligent audience strategy combined with targeting and a creative approach. Now let's get started and I want to guide you through all the way from awareness, adding to consideration and conversion. Now when it comes to build awareness, you want to start with two separate targeting strategies. 
The first one is find new customers, and you want to retarget pin engagers. What are pin engagers? So on Pinterest, a lot of pinners could potentially already have engaged with your pins leading to your website. So we want to make sure to retarget them as well, also for the first funnel. So the targeting strategy follows the targeting inclusion. And for find new customers, you can easily select interest, depending on your business needs, keywords, expanded targeting. But for retargeting engagers, we're now creating an audience. And in this audience, we want to make sure to retarget all these pin engagers. For the targeting exclusion, we need to make sure to, to avoid overlapping, to use this audience as an exclusion for finding new customers. And for replacement, you can use all. Why? Because pinners are present everywhere in the home feed, search related pins. So make sure to be present. When it comes to the ad format, you can use standard ads, mixed with videos, standard videos, idea ads. And when it comes to the creative, make sure to use strong branding and also a prominent, br consistent branding over the entire time of the video to ensure ad recall. If there's a product involved, use a product shot. And of course, Pinterest is visual, so think about the creatives. Now, there's a second option. If you have the Pinterest tag implemented, you can also aim to target net new customers only. So while the best practices remain the same for this example, you can just create another audience based on the data you're getting from the Pinterest tag, which can be website visitors from the last six months. Again, this can depend on your business needs, if it's longer or shorter, but here you will ensure that you only target net new pinners. Now we're adding the second layer. So we have awareness active. Now go to the consideration part. Here our main goal is to retarget the impressions and the engagements that you're already getting from your awareness activities. Now the targeting strategy can be twofold. One is a manual retargeting approach using the consideration objective. Or you might remember from my previous slides, you can also use shopping on a scaled approach on a cost per click basis. Now, as a targeting inclusion, we, of course, want to include all the engagers from our awareness activities, either for the manual retargeting or for the scaled retargeting approach. As an exclusion, we don't need anything because we already included a specific audience. The placement remains all. The ad formats slightly vary from static carousel to collections or within our catalog sales objective, shopping collection ads. I already provided a very nice example. And when it comes to the creative messaging, you want to drive traffic to your website. So be sure to use a clear call to action, according and including all our other best practices. Now, we're in the second final stage, but there still is a chance that we're missing potential customers and pinners on Pinterest. Now, what we just do is another option is we can exclude the view and engagements and just make sure to target someone who hasn't seen our activities yet so far. Again, the same best practices apply for this example. Now let's go to conversions. And for conversions, I brought two slides, one for conversions, the manual approach, and another one for shopping. So now you want to reach pinners and people who are most likely to take action. Again, you can have a prospecting approach and retargeting and reconnect with users. Now for prospecting, keywords, interest, best to use. Now we're building two new audiences. Number one for reconnecting with users is site visitors. We want to make sure to target pinners who already visited our website. And in addition, we also can retarget pinners with a specific conversion intent at to cart. Help them to make the purchase for your brand. As a targeting exclusion, we just use this for excluding within the prospecting objective. And here you can use the conversion intent that you're want to optimize towards, right? It can be the lead, the sign up. You don't want to sign up people who already signed up for your website. Placement remains all. The ad format from standard ads to carousel to collection. And as a best practice, the product should remain in the center, use a headline, consistent branding. And if you have clear price communication already, you have an offer, you can also include it within the best practice creative. Now for shopping, we can just do exactly the same just on a scaled approach. Prospecting, reconnect with users. And here we automatically use the product metadata that you get from the feed. And for the other one, the site visitors and the add to cards again. Targeting exclusion, we want to exclude those people who already brought, for example, a kitchen. I hope it's a good quality kitchen. Otherwise, maybe, of course, they need to buy another one again. But it really depends on the, f on the business you're working with, fashion or home decor, about the length of the look back window. 
Placement is slightly different. For prospecting, we can use search because in search, people are already and actively looking for their ideas, so make sure to be present. While for reconnecting, we can target across all placements. The ad format, we use our best practices, and for the creative messaging as well. Now, as a last option here, dynamic retargeting, you can just sit, sit back, relax, and let our system do the work for you. With automatic retargeting, we automatically retarget pinners who put something into the basket or visit the website by checking the ID of the product via the Pinterest tag and showing them the exact product that they have been visited or have not made the decision yet. Now, that was a lot of content, but measurement also for funnel is key. So if there's one thing you take from this slide is that you should never measure the success using a single source of truth, but rather using a measurement system of truth. How does this look like? This can cover multiple, multiple topics, starting from the right, the platform metrics and insights that you, of course, always compare with your advertiser KPIs to incrementality studies and geotests showing you what drives incrementality and works best where, to media mix modeling and internal attribution and MTA to recalibrate again and again and again. And all of this always is an iterative process of trying, evaluating, adapting, or adjusting. Now I want to end this part of the presentation with another success story using multi objective and full funnel. Kartenmacherei, a leading online printing company in Germany, used our full funnel approach to help pinners explore, get inspiration, and guide them towards the entire user journey and pinner journey to achieve more conversions. They applied our best practices, used various mix of ad formats in combination with all of the objectives, and I think what you can also see here is that the results are amazing. In comparison to the last years, their volume of sales increased by 70%, and they were able to achieve a 49% higher return on advertised spend and lower 51% CPA compared to other digital media channels. Now, these are amazing results that you can achieve while using a full funnel strategy with the best practices. Now, I know this is a lot. There has been a lot of examples. There have been a lot of success stories. So we want to make sure that we also got you covered leaving this masterclass. So if you want to get more from Pinterest, we have a designated online e-learning platform, the Pinterest Academy, which we specifically designed for advertisers, agencies, to learn, sign up, and learn all the things that we discussed. It really doesn't matter if you're completely new or if you just want to refresh your knowledge. We would like you to enroll, to use the course, and of course, at the end, you can also get yourself a badge and show your Pinterest expertise across the channels. Now for the last slide and the key takeaways, handing over to Torsten to bring it home. Thanks, Ben. Okay, some applause, yes. So it has already been said a lot of times, there was a lot of content. Um, but rest assured, we got you covered. We're sending out a summary of the content from the presentation in a follow-up mail within the next days. But now let's have a quick look at the key takeaways for now. First, we talked about what is a full funnel concept. It is engaging with your customers across the several dimensions of the decision-making process. It is at best that a free each funnel stage positively impacts and informs the following ones. And lastly, social media platforms build a perfect playground for applying a full funnel stage. Second, we talked about full funnel on Pinterest because industry experts and Pinterest data suggest that it simply delivers better results. Also, Pinterest outperforms on each stage of the, funnel, uh, of the funnel and also it's all driven by positivity. Third, we talked about how to activate on full funnel and simply apply the learnings that Ben and Martina shared and also take advantage of the recently rolled out new innovative formats from Pinterest. So if you could do us a last favor, like share feedback, please, either directly or at best, because that's getting tracked with the form that's going to be sent out within the next days in the follow-up mail. Second, meet us at our booth here at the Hall A1. Talk to us directly. And third, just keep yourself updated with the latest and greatest of Pinterest, either by enrolling for the Pinterest Academy or by regularly checking our business site. So that's it. 
Thanks for being our guest. I hope you enjoyed a little bit the content of the presentation and have a great, a great rest of the day here at the OMR. See you. Take care. <laughs>